G'day, I'm Joel. I'm a personal trainer from Bondi Beach, Australia. And in March 2020, I had a tumour removed from my brain. I created this YouTube channel to bring motivation, support and insights to anyone going through a brain surgery journey of their own. I would love to help as many patients and their families as possible. If what I'm saying is helpful, please like and subscribe. I will never be 100% again, and here's why. So when my surgeon cut into my brain to remove the tumor, he knowingly cut into tissue, which affected many parts of my body, and sadly, will never be the same again. No matter how much rehab, how much positive thought, and how much effort I put into moving forward, Some things will never be the same and I've completely come around to accepting that. The way I get past this is I put things into perspective. I'm alive. So if I'm alive and I have challenges with doing up buttons on my shirt, tying my shoelaces and walking up and down stairs, I'll I'll live with that. I'm completely fine with that. I would rather have those daily challenges to overcome than not be here at all. So yeah, I I see myself as very lucky and, and grateful. Uh, it was also quite cool. My surgeon, Dr. Charlie Teo, for many people in Australia, you would know him. For those of you who are in other countries, you may not have heard of him. He is absolutely excellent at looking after people who have very challenging to operate on brain tumors. Uh, and he's become a, a very good friend of mine and we check in with each other throughout the year. And he's a great, great human being and I wouldn't be here without him. He's that smart. He told me and my family what would happen to my body once he did cut in to get the uh, the tumor out. So he let me know that the coordination on my left hand side would completely go out the window. So an easy way to think of it, pretend the right hand side of my body is sober and completely fine and functional. And the left hand side of my body is drunk. So it's a little bit less coordinated. It's uh, target accuracy is way off. And another good analogy I use is if we went down the pub and I walked up to a bar and I ordered two drinks, I would have to carry them back one at a time to the table because the drink in my left hand would completely shake and I would spill most of it. So my surgeon warned me about that, the lack of coordination in my left hand side, which affects fine motor skills, so buttoning shirts, tying shoelaces, picking little things up. It also affects my um, my balance and walking up and down stairs. Because as you can imagine, having the left hand side of you drunk and accuracy trying to put your feet on stairs up and down, it, it makes it quite challenging. So he did warn me that my coordination and my walking will be will be severely affected and potentially for life. It's come a long way. I literally couldn't stand up for a month after surgery and I couldn't walk three months after surgery. I was stuck in my bed. Eventually with persistence, positive thought and a lot of rehab, I can now walk and get around. But I do walk like a bit of a a, a little drunk penguin. Um, So that's one thing. As well as another really bizarre thing, which I don't know if I'll ever recover from 100%, is my swallow. Such a bizarre symptom to, to ever hear of. Um, and I will go to uh, more detail in my swallow in other videos. But basically, I couldn't eat or drink for three months after surgery. I had to get fed through a tube, initially through my nose into my stomach. And then after a while, they drilled a hole through my tummy and straight into my stomach and I would feed myself with a uh, with a tube and a glorified protein shake four to five times a day. So not being able to eat and me loving food was very, very challenging. And still to this day, nearly five years on, I have to be very, very, very conscious of when I swallow foods, drinks, and even my own saliva because I can nearly choke on most days. It's still a massive challenge and a, and a chore. Um, and for those people who are close to me and work with me, they can attest to the fact that I, I cough a lot and I choke on my saliva. 
a couple of times a day, every day. And it, it does sound like I'm choking to death and I, and, I, and I promise them and I promise you that I'm not. So coordination, walking and swallowing have been completely affected and I don't know and I don't think they'll ever come back to 100%. And I just want to premise this guys with, with those of you who are watching that are also brain surgery survivors. No two recovery journeys are ever the same. My, my tumor was in a different part of my brain than potentially yours is. So hopefully you don't have the side effects or deficits that I do. I'm just sharing my story and what had happened to me to give you guys a bit of insights. I have met other people in forums and the brain tumor community that do have the exact same post-op symptoms as me and the same daily challenges and struggles that I go through. So mine are fine motor skills and being uncoordinated on my left hand side. Challenges with walking, especially up and down staircases and also swallowing. And I've also had challenges with my eyesight, especially in that left hand side, which is which has basically become uncoordinated all through the from my toes up until my eyes. So initially, straight after brain surgery, I had severe double vision. I couldn't see a thing. Everything was like going around in circles like this. And as you can imagine, when you are laying in a hospital bed for 10 weeks, you've got a lot of spare time on your hands and you probably wanted to sit there and binge watch Game of Thrones or House of the Dragon or something like that. I couldn't even do that. I remember trying to watch a rugby league game of my, my favorite team and I literally could not as much as I concentrated on watching it. I couldn't see the, uh, the footage and sadly, my team lost. I could still listen to it. So uh, I was listening to the commentary. And then to this day, like I'm still seeing an ophthalmologist, my eye has severe, severe dryness because the neurons and then the nerves going to my, my eye don't work correctly. So there's no tear secretion and my, my eye doesn't naturally build the moisture up that it should. So I use eye drops all day long um, to, to keep my eye moist, for lack of a better word, and keep it hydrated. And, and in winter when it's really cold outside or even in summer when there's air con, my eye dries out a lot and I can go from perfect vision in the morning to completely blind in that one eye by the, uh, by the afternoon. The way I stay positive through all this stuff is like I say to myself, I'm right hand dominant and have been my whole life. And thank goodness it's affected my left hand side and not my right hand side. So I can still drive, I can still ride, I can still type, I can still carry most things. I can still get through uh, a functional life uh, because it is my less dominant side that has been affected. Although it does feel really, really uncoordinated and it is challenging trying to carry two separate things at once. Um, but I, I, I look at the silver lining of the birth of my son. So he's now 13 months and he's running around and doing lots of things. He will naturally jump and fall and it, it helps me to recover and rehabilitate because my left hand has to instinctively quickly grab him and stop him from falling. So he's been a good little rehab challenge in itself. So to wrap this video up, will I ever get back to 100%? For me... It's a no. I will never get back to running up and down staircases like I used to as a PT. I will never get back to doing burpees. I will never get back to swinging a golf club. Um, these things I've accepted, but I'm here. I'm alive. So I'm stoked that I can move forward. Yes, I won't be able to swing a cricket bat or a baseball bat as well as I used to. I won't be able to play football. This is a Chelsea shirt. I love Chelsea. I won't be able to play football as well as I used to, but... I'm alive, I'm breathing, I'm achieving other things in my life, career-wise, socially, relationships, family-wise, that, I, that I, I'm very, very, very happy and grateful and lucky to be able to say I could do. Because if the brain tumor was left and we didn't operate and have these side effects, my surgeon told me my heart and lungs would have stopped and I would have died. So it was a pretty easy decision to, to operate knowing that these deficits would happen and then I wouldn't be back to 100% ever again. I'm not saying that you and your surgery and your recovery journey you won't get back to 100%. I've honestly interacted with hundreds of people in the comments and the DMs on my Instagram and Facebook and as well as Facebook forums that I'm in. 
they have fully recovered. And I know many of you watch my channel for motivation and insights. Just because I'm not gonna 100% fully recover to where I was before doesn't mean you won't. Um, and I honestly wish you all the best. And my number one piece of advice is get stuck into your rehab. Never stop learning, never stop moving. Even with my challenge side, I try and use my challenge side a lot for turning on light switches, for pressing lift and elevator buttons, for carrying bags, even though it feels really, really, really uncoordinated. And the bags eventually continually bash into my knee as we walk along. If you don't use it, you'll lose it. And I'm not a neurosurgeon, but I can talk around neuroplasticity. The more you do use your challenge side, the better it does become. I've improved drastically over the past five years in my recovery. And just because I'm not going to re return to how I once was, doesn't mean that I can't improve drastically. So guys, I'm now making it a little kind of unique selling point about my channel. I'm only going to make videos of the questions that my followers ask in the comments. So if you have a question, don't assume that I'll just randomly make a video on it. Please pop it in the comments below. I am here and I'm dedicating my spare time on my channel to educating and motivating and giving insights to other warriors in the community who have a who have a recovery journey ahead of them or who want to know more about my story. So please fire your direct questions in the comments below and I will make a video to answer your questions. All right, guys, please like and subscribe. Please help, help the algorithm get my videos out to more and more people. And in the interim, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.